at the piano is Dwight Mitchell. He is one half of a jazz combo called the Mitchell Rough Duo. This is the French horn. It's played by the other member of the duo. His name is Willie Ruff. What is your name, please? My name is Willie Ruff. My name is Willie Ruff. My name is Willie Ruff. Only one of these gentlemen is the real Willie Ruff. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth. To Tell the Truth is brought to you this evening by the makers of Gravy Train, the dog food that lets you do a little more for your dog. Gravy Train. And now, here's our host, Bob Collier. <laughs> Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening, panel. Good evening, Good evening. Bob. You're on your evening behavior, I see. <laughs> <laughs> In front of you, you will find an envelope. Open it up and follow along with me as I read you this story. I, Willie Ruff, am one half of a jazz combo called the Mitchell Ruff Duo. My partner, Dwight Mitchell, plays the piano, and I play the French horn and bass viol. As a team, we have traveled throughout Europe and were the first to play jazz in the Soviet Union. I have also lectured on jazz at the Moscow Conservatory. Because of our frequent trips outside of the United States, we came to the attention of the State Department and the White House. As a result, the Mitchell-Ruff duo was honored by being asked to play at the reception given by President Johnson during his recent visit to Mexico. It marked the first time in American history that jazz musicians were invited to form part of an official diplomatic mission by a president of the United States. Signed, Willie Ruff. <laughs> Panel, these gentlemen all claim to be Willie Ruff. We'll start the questioning, if we may, with Peggy Cat. Peggy? Thank you, bud. Uh, number three, could you p please tell me what instrument Don Elliott plays? The mellophone. Thank you. And number one, do you know what instrument Jimmy Rainey plays? No, I do not. Uh, number two, what instrument does Dave Brubeck play? The uh, piano. Thank you. And number one, what instrument does Charlie, did Charlie Parker play? Alto saxophone. Two, Miles Davis. What instrument did he play? The trumpet. Did he? No, does he play? I'm sorry. Uh, number three, uh, do you say that you were the first ones to go to the Soviet Union? Did you go there before Louis Armstrong? Louis Armstrong, to my knowledge, did not go. He didn't? No. Number one, he did go behind, behind the Iron Curtain, however, did he not? That's right. That's correct. Oh, I know where he went. Mm. Uh, Orson B. Number one, where did he go behind the Iron Curtain? <coughs> I'm not sure exactly where he did travel behind I'm the Iron I'm not curtain. sure he went at all, but I suppose he did. Number two, complete this phrase, Lambert, Hendricks, and... Bavan. Uh, used to be what? Roth. All right. Number oh. three. Uh, <laughs> very fast. Number three. I'm speaking the loyalty of jazz. Now, the Duke, the Count, and the Earl. A question in three parts. You have 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Duke Ellington, Count Basie, and Earl Hines. Marvelous. Number one. Birdland was named after whom? Charlie Parker. And why was he called the bird? Well, uh, as a matter of the way he played, he just picked up the nickname Charlie the Bird Parker. Yeah, what, 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 at one point, one point he played with unusual background. What was it? Charlie Parker with what? With string. All right. Number two. God, you guys are great. <laughs> 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 Number two. The Russians are crazy about American jazz. Is that right? No. Now, since you, since you went there? Yes. <laughs> Number three. Where do the young people <laughs> foregather to do the modern dances? Where do they dance? now? Yeah. Well, in beaches? No, I mean in Moscow. Houses. I don't know. You don't know. Uh, number one, where did you stay in Moscow? Central Hotel. Uh, number two, why is the French horn considered one of the most difficult instruments to play? It's, uh, it's embouchure. It's what? It's embouchure. Is that the reason? Number three, do you agree with that? Yes. Number one, there's a classical piece written for the um, uh, French horn. Can you tell me what it is? I f don't recall the name. It's a piece by uh, Tchaikovsky. Thank you. Tom Poston. Uh, well, I just wondered, number three, you know an awful lot. Do you know why he was called the bird? Char Charlie Parker? Yeah. No, I don't. 
Do you know number two, where that name came from? No, I don't. Well, it was Yardbird. If you're not, I probably, you probably do remember. Number one, Thigpen is a musician friend of mine. What's his name? Uh, Thigpen. Ed, Ed Thigpen, I believe it is. No, number, thank you, number one. Number two, with what combo does he play, or at least has he played his most? With the Oscar Peterson Trio. And number three, Oscar plays? Piano. Thank you. You guys are sensational. <laughs> That's it. Then time to vote. So vote now, if you will, please, without change, without any consultation. Just vote. Vote, of course, it's for too, number too one, hard. number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will receive, of course, $250 for every incorrect vote. Our ballots all marked, panel? Now they are. Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I don't, I don't see how uh, anyone could be absolutely dead sure they may have made some wrong answers but i wasn't able to pin them down however ed thigpen is the drummer with oscar peterson so i voted for number one i liked him anyway peggy cat well i couldn't tell because they were all so brilliant so i just voted for the first one that's number one Horse me. oh i think you're nuts it isn't number <laughs> one i mean uh oh i had so many good reasons he didn't know jimmy rainey now jimmy rainey is not a big name musician but he is the kind of uh Great. Guitarist that I think pros would know. I voted for number three because uh, Milt Kamen told, it used to be a French horn player for about 10, 15, 20 years he was, and he told me that all French horn players are a little crazy. And number three, his eyes. Uh, <laughs> he has Milt Kamen's eyes. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Well, I voted for number two Thank because you. number one said that Tchaikovsky wrote a piece for the French horn, and he may have, but that's not the famous one I was thinking of. And number two has the mouth of a man who has been playing a wind instrument for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, there we have it. The votes are all in, and the minds made up and reasons given. Now, by way of revealing which gentleman is the real Willie Ruff, Dwight Mitchell, come on back out, if you will, please, at the piano, and start the introduction to Billy Strayhorn's suite, The Blue Pavan. <laughs> Now, will the real Willie Ruff join his partner for a brilliant example of some really way out progressive jazz? Incidentally, the Mitchell Ruff uh, duo has recorded a new album called After This Message. Uh, you know, I'm sure, well, from now on, your partner's going to be watching your eyes all the time. <laughs> <You're playing laughs> <all over. laughs> it was great. We thank you thank very you. much. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Proctor Houston, and I'm a sales representative for IBM. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Quinman Milton, and I'm a wig consultant at Wig City. <laughs> Taking the score is very happy to see you. You did a supreme job of fooling, and that means there were three incorrect votes. Three times $250 is $750, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Hope you had as good a time as you gave us. Good night. God bless you.
What is your name, please? My name is Tony Mazza. My name is Tony Mazza. My name is Tony Mazza. Follow along with your next copy, which is in that next envelope, if you will, panel. I, Tony Mazza, am a game warden for the State Conservation Department. I work on a small, rocky island with an area of only 22 square miles. It is my job to check all violations of fish and game laws and ensure the safety of such protected animals and birds as egrets, woodcocks, squirrels, and skunks. In the course of duty, I have also had to relocate the nest of two duck hawks, run down illegal netters of striped bass, and coax an angry bear cub out of a cellar. What makes my assignment really unique is its location. I am game warden for the island of Manhattan, the heart of New York City. Signed, Tony Mazza. <laughs> Panel, these three gentlemen heard, uh, claim, as you heard, to be Tony Mazza. We'll start the cross-examination with Orson Bean. Orson? Yes, uh, well, number anything. I, uh, number two, I, for once and for all, I would like to pin down a rumor. It is rumored that there exist beneath the city of Manhattan alligators who have arrived here as tiny little babies from Florida who are subsequently flushed by angry mothers down the thing and, and wind up in the sewers, grow to enormous lengths, nurtured by the, the warmth and the steam down there, and uh, that's why the sewer workers have such high pay. This is true, number two. <laughs> is it true? Haven't you heard that rumor for years? Is it? Uh, uh, no comment, sir. No comment at all. Well, I'm glad it is. Number, number three. Oh, really? I was only getting wound up. Sorry was worth it, believe me. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number three, who is a man called Brower? I have no idea. I've never heard Number two, uh, well, how come you find a Gret? Uh, pardon me? Where do you find a Gret? It says in the affidavit you find birds like a Gret. Well, they migrate into the metropolitan area in Long Island. Where do you but find we're, them? We're referring to a millinery farm being used for millinery purposes. Oh, you don't. If you see one on a lady's hat, you snatch it off. No. Only if it's live. If it's exhibited in a commercial establishment, then oh, we have from to... From the aigrettes that I own, I'm safe to wear. I would say so. And uh, number one, number one, yes. Where did you find a bear cub in a cellar? This was downtown here in the city. What for? Why was he in a cellar? To? This, I have no idea. Where do you find people's netting striped bags? <laughs> this is all very Tom Poston. Uh, well, first of all, I didn't know that Manhattan was only 22 square miles. Is that true, number three? It is. Well, gee, that's only one by a lot. I don't know. That's funny. I thought it was bigger than that. But I guess that's big enough to take care of us. But uh, number two, uh, where did the bear cub come from? I'm kind of interested in that myself. Yes, sir. I, number and two didn't that. answer. Imported from Maine. And number three, how did it get in the basement? It was left there by his owner. And you had to coax it out because? We, a, we coaxed it out and gave it back to him. He now, was absent at the time. Uh, number three, uh, don't we have egrets in Manhattan? We, we do, but we check on their authenticity, whether they're the real thing. Not live ones, the dead ones we look at. In shock. Peggy Cat. Number one, who wrote A Natural History of New York City? Do you know? I don't know. Thank you. Number three, could you tell me when the stripers run in New York and where? I couldn't tell you. Well, number two, do you know when the striped bass run? They're running right now. And where? Hudson River is a good run of stripers on, on in the Hudson River. And, and number three, do you have any province over the shad runs in the Hudson? No, I have none. Oh, now, number one, when a cat goes up the tree, you usually call a fire department. Are we supposed to call you? And what is your number? Uh, no. <laughs> no. For reasons of my own. That's not in my jurisdiction. <laughs> that would not be within my jurisdiction. Uh -huh. That's all the time we have, and maybe it's just as well. Mark your ballots, if you will, please. Mark them at once without change and without any consultation whatsoever. Vote now for number one, number two, or number three. Oh, Barrett's Mark. Uh, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number two. I thought uh, number three didn't know too many things, and I thought <laughs> number two did, so I voted for him. Uh, Peggy Cat. I voted for number three. I don't think number two knew many things that I thought number three did. <laughs> no, the thing is the stripers don't number two. Stripers wouldn't be in the, in the, in the river. Uh, uh, shad would be in the river, but stripers are saltwater fish, so what would they be doing in the river? 
<laughs> we, from where, Bear Mountain? I mean... It's all in which way the bear oh, goes over the mountain, that's oh. right. Horse and bees. Well, I think number two is Beady of Eye and has a sharp... He could, uh, you know, he could tell the striped bass from the Mr. Goodbar wrappers here in the East River. <laughs> and so I, uh, I voted for him. Uh, he Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number two because I agree with Orson. It's very hard to tell the striped bass from the orange peel. White the fish, everything is there. You can't tell. Yeah, but I do believe that the yeah. shad is coming down, but it's going up and the... Uh, I believe what he said. <laughs> so the votes are in and the minds are made up, and we'll find out which one of these three gentlemen in truth is Tony Mazza. Will the real Tony Mazza please stand up? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Did you say actually you're a game warden for only the island of Manhattan? I have another territory. Oh, what's that? The Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have asked. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Bob Roach and I'm a freelance graphic designer. Number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Tom Spellios. I'm a chemist with the Lane and Fink Corporation. We make Dorothy Gray cosmetics. Thank you. And checking the score, we find there were there was just one incorrect vote, but that's worth $250. And gentlemen, we thank you for adding to our pleasure tonight. Good night and God bless you. <laughs> and now let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Clee Kinney. My name is Clee Kinney. My name is Clee Kinney. You have another envelope there, panel? Open it up and follow along in that story with me. I, Clee Kinney, am the co-author of a new book on how to buy products and services at a fraction of their retail price. Our tips on how to buy at a discount are based on personal experience. For instance, we live in a home on 50 acres which we bought for a song at a court auction. We wear Paris originals and Italian suits for which we paid one-third the original price. Our home is filled with valuable antiques we found in Salvation Army stores. Our book explains how and where to buy wholesale, how to find bargains in a pawn shop, how to buy at an auction, what the real facts are on mail order houses, discount stores, and thrift shops, and how to use the classified ads intelligently. Secure in the knowledge that in these United States in 1966, just about the only thing you cannot buy at a discount is a postage stamp, we have entitled our book, How to Get 20 to 90% Off on Everything You Buy. Signed, Clee Kinney. <laughs> panel, these three persons all claim to be Clee Kinney. We'll start with Kitty Carlisle. Oh, Kitty? thank you. But I'm so excited, I don't know what to do. You know that George Aid once said, the average American woman will buy anything she thinks the department store is losing money on. Uh -huh. And that's the way I feel about it. So number three, how, well, how much did your house cost? 18000 For a 50-acre estate? Right. Number two, how do you find out about these court auctions? In the local newspapers. They Were you living nearby at the time? No. Well, how did you get the local newspaper? A friend of mine saw it and told me about it. Uh-huh. Number one, it says most of the times in, these, in the department stores that the discount houses really don't give you that much of a discount now. That is pretty much the same as the department stores. Do you find this to be true? Well, I think that varies from discount house to discount house. Thank you. Number three, what does your name stand for, C-L-E? Clementine. Tom Poston. Well, number two, does your name stand for Clementine? Because <laughs> we would know if it didn't. What? what? Cleland. Cleland. Very interesting. Number one, are you going to go along with Clementine? <laughs> Clea. Cl oh, Clea. Oh, you're all, all different now, you devils. Number three, <laughs> you have a lovely gown on. Is that a French uh, thing that you got for a reasonable? This one isn't. But you usually do, right? I do have Number two, is your suit Italian and uh, expensive and you got it for less? No. Number one, are you wearing anything that you got at a very good discount? You bet. Oh, how did you do that? That's what I want to hear, how you can get 90% off of anything. 
Am I spelled out? Begging yes. cash. Yes, you uh, are. Yes, Donald. everyone. I bet you know how to get Italian and French clothes uh, one third, uh, two thirds off. Where do you do that? In Paris or in Italy. Oh, my golly. That's quite a plane ticket you have to buy to get over there. <laughs> I mean, is that what you do? You go over there and save 25 bucks on a dress? Well, you travel a lot, don't you? No, I never get to go anywhere. Oh. Oh. Now, oh. number three, do you buy things in a pawn shop? Because I think it's so sad to, to buy something that's been pawned by some poor thing that needed the money. Yes, I do buy at pawn shops. Being from the South, we more or less look around for these things, and uh, I find it quite saving. I feel it might be my grandmother's wedding ring and it'd get me awfully depressed. Uh, now, number two, do you... Of course it'll be. Oh, you're so fresh. <laughs> well, now, now, number uh, three, I... I, uh, <laughs> I never shopped for bargains until I came to New York. I grew up in a small town in Vermont with one store. Our town was so small, we had one yellow page. And it's all new to me. <laughs> is, is it a... Uh, I'm, I'm told it's a psychological shortcoming to be always interested in, in bargains. Is this true? Is it a quirk of psychology? Well, I don't think so. I think it's a great saving, and I find by shopping around at army stores, Salvation yeah. Armies and whatnot, I can have much more in my home than if I would just yeah, go out and buy what I want. Why, some at the Army Navy store, the Salvation <laughs> Army. That's all the time we have, and once again, it's time to vote. So mark your ballots, if you will, please, panel. Mark him immediately without any consultation betwixt and between you, and, of course, without changing once you have marked. All ballots but one are marked, and there it goes. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number two. I've heard of the name Cleland, and, and uh, uh, besides, I don't think those two mm. good-looking ladies, you can get them out in a farm. <laughs> <laughs> those are city girls. Peggy Cat. I voted for number three because she says her name is Clee, and her real name is Clementine, and that's 75% off Clementine. <laughs> oh, you're wild. Oh. Horse and bean. They're all fine, but I voted for number three because uh, I think she has the unerring eye of... Uh, you know, one of these ladies that uh, that's slightly damaged, you can have a cheap. Oh, I see. It goes down to S. Klein's on the square and has to have the Blue Cross, you know, when she comes home from shopping. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Well, in spite of what I said about women, I voted for number two. Because number two has to me the look of a very thrifty fellow. All right, well, it's evenly divided then. Two and two. All right, let's find out how we stack up against the face of the truth itself as you learn which of these three persons, in truth, is Clee Kinney. Will the real Clee Kenny please stand up? <laughs> when you say uh, uh, we all the time, is that your wife and yourself yes. that do this shopping? Yes. Good. More power to you. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Lael Jackson and I'm a travel consultant with Kelly Travel Service in Hollywood, California. Thank you. And number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Evelyn Anderson and I'm a laboratory supervisor at Phelps Memorial Hospital, North Carytown, New York. <laughs> Taking the score, we find two and two. That means two incorrect, two correct. For the two incorrect, they're each worth $250. Total, therefore, $500, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you very much for sharing your evening with us. Goodbye and God bless you. Incidentally, our own Tom Poston opens tomorrow night at the Coconut Grove Playhouse. Where? In Florida, in Miami Florida, Beach, Miami, Miami Beach, Florida. Florida, and the well-dressed liar. Yeah, with Jack Sharkey's play, George Abbott's directing it, and it's really funny. Well, success to you. Good night, panel. Join us at the same time tomorrow on the afternoon show, and see you at the same time next week, of course, the nighttime show. But until I see you again, don't forget to tell the truth. Bye. To tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotman production.